What's up, everybody? It's your favorite YouTuber here, Josh Cannon, Dancing with Ghosts. Back again to do some more commentary about some music-related things, because that's what I do after all. So, a few days ago, um, this particular flyer broke the internet, or Facebook at least. Um, the dream team of any millennial who was even remotely alive in the early 2000s, which if you weren't alive, then you're still not alive. Anyway, it didn't make sense. But anyway, a uh, huge emo festival to take place in Las Vegas uh, at some point this year. And the lineup, when I first saw this poster, I thought, you know, because you see posters like this from time to time. Someone makes like their dream team uh, concert list of, uh, you know, all the bands they wish could be on the same bill, you know, and that's what I thought this was. I thought, okay, some, you know, some aging millennial on my friends list has made this uh, witty little flyer with all the bands that they liked growing up on there. Nope, this is confirmed. It's happening. Um, it's going to be going down in Las Vegas um, Saturday, October 22nd. They got the tickets. They got uh, these uh, hotel packages, which they know millennials all have grown up and have jobs now and can and will buy these $500 packages. Um, so, you know, all my friends are telling me about this. Everybody's freaking out on my Facebook page. People are asking me what I think about it. People are coming up to me at my gigs going, dude, aren't you so stoked? Uh, I can't believe this. And I, I have to harbor this secret inside of me, almost like a, I'm like a, a closeted homosexual or something. And um, I just, I'm gonna come out with it on here. I don't like emo music, and I never fucking did. Okay, okay, said it. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. Yeah, uh, growing up, I, I very, uh, very clearly remember this music coming to the forefront when I was in about seventh or eighth grade. We were coming off the toes of the uh, the new rock, butt rock stuff. People were over corn. They were over Limp Bizkit. Uh, they were get, they were hitting puberty, their balls were dropping, their vaginas were forming into vaginas, and they had feelings, feelings that they didn't used to have. And these, um, as my friend once put it, boy bands with guitars were tapping into those feelings uh, that uh, come with puberty and all the bad relationships and awkward experiences and depression that you find yourself having. Me, on the other hand, um, I was still over in my corner of the classroom uh, listening to Rush, rocking Primus, jamming out to Tool, worshipping the Smashing Pumpkins. 90s alternative rock was and always will be my favorite period of music, uh, followed closely by 70s prog rock. But, you know, I am looking like an 80-year-old man right now. Um, so, yeah, basically, I never liked any of these bands. There are, there are a few exceptions. There are a few exceptions. But... Um, I made some some reasons, made some reasons why I don't like emo. Now, let's talk about that that term emo. Nowadays, we just call it emo, and everybody knows what you're referring to. Everyone knows the bands. Even if the band isn't technically emo, they're just roped in there, like, you know, the, the, the term goth bands. There might be a group like Susie and the Banshees that aren't goth but they're just roped into that it's like whether you like it or not you're goth you're you know you're in the goth music genre that's how it is with emo nowadays so back in the day we broke it down a little bit more there was like post hardcore there was metalcore emo core screamo um hardcore all that stuff that we we broke it down more meticulously back in the day but now it's all just emo so anytime you hear me use that term in regarding a band please don't attack me about it in the comment section because I'm telling you that's how the press looks at it nowadays that's how millennials look at it nowadays even the little Gen Zers who weren't even they might not even been born or if they were were alive they're only like three or four years old even they know they, they just call it emo now it's a lo loosely based term um, I don't like emo and never did um, first reason the lyrical content um, the lyrical content with emo music is never going to get any more explorative or any more existential than I'm going through a bad breakup. I want to 
Um, I'm trying to think of a way to say this without getting demonetized. I want to not be alive anymore and do it at my own hand. Probably still going to get in trouble for that. Um, I am depressed. I am not happy. I don't like the city or the town that I live in. Um, and that's all I can really think of. Or I'm angry. I'm pissed off. So the five things. So what I'm saying is the lyrical content is it, it was something that I felt was very melodramatic. I felt like it was a little over exaggerated for effect. I felt like it was a little bit of a pose that these artists were putting on. Like, really? Are you really that sad? Are you really that upset? Or do you know, are you business minded enough to know that this sells? Especially the chicks. They like that emotional shit. So they're, so they're going to come out. They're going to buy your CD because CDs were still sold back then. They're going to go to your concert. They're going to rock your shirt. And good Lord, the fashion was such a huge part of it. The fashion, I did not have a problem with. In fact, I will say emo chicks were some of the, will remain to me some of the hottest chicks out there. I loved the, the, the fox hair and the, the raccoon eyes and the, the pale aesthetic and all that shit. I, I loved it. The Hell, even back in the day, I co-opted some of the emo fashion. I had a pair of skinny jeans. I'm still rocking the lip ring. And um, there was some other stuff that I did that I can't remember right now. But anyway, um, yeah, no, don't don't care for the lyrics. Uh, f constantly found myself like questioning the authenticity. They, you know, they would you, you would never hear them talk about like what's the per what's the reason why we're on this planet or um, you know uh, I don't know just the bigger questions or you know it could be something like. Uh, Primus, who does songs about like Tommy the Cat and My Name Is Mud, like you, you would, they would never get experimental in that way. It's they, there was always a mold, and there was always, I was always finding myself frustrated that I, I was wanting to relate to these lyrics because I was in the target demographic. I was a teenager, I was depressed, but I, I would rather listen to Billy Corgan talk about his depression than, uh, you know, Taking Back Sunday. And anyway, go, going into my next reason why I had uh, took issue with emo music was I felt like that it, it fostered toxic toxic environments um, you know cutting was a big thing back when I was in middle school and I can't help but to think that bands like Hawthorne Heights whose biggest song is cut my wrists and black my eyes because I can't fall asleep tonight because you killed me impressionable teenagers who are already feeling like crap uh, you know, you're, you're glamorizing self-harm and hey, guess what? Now everybody I know is cutting themselves or has tried to cut themselves. And I just uh, thought that was shitty that they were doing that. Even, even as, at a young age, I'm like, wow, that's really irresponsible that they're like not necessarily encouraging it, but they're talking about it. Or maybe they were slightly encouraging it. Um, the uh, kind of the encouraging the... I can't, fuck it, I'm just gonna say it. Encouraging, like, kind of the suicidal ideation in some of these songs. Um, there, there there, was a lot of underage kind of culture going on at these shows, and a lot of bands ha who are now coming to the forefront were taking advantage of that. Now, that's not specific to emo music or the emo bands. That's been happening with all genres of rock and probably hip-hop since the beginning, but um, it seemed like, in particular... Um, there seem to be more predators in that culture and in that scene than in maybe like other scenes like metal or, you know, whatever. Uh, that's just me shooting from the hip on that one. I'm not exactly sure. But now let's get to the music itself. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of actual music, musical notes, guitar notes, piano synthesis. I like music. I don't really care about lyrics that much. And with emo, much like country music, the big impetus is placed on the lyrics and the lyrical content and how you can relate to their pain and suffering. And the music is kind of just a vessel, a, a agent, a bridge to deliver that message to you. The music itself is secondary. And any genre where the music is secondary can go fuck itself as far as I am concerned. I like music so much, I will listen to instrumental albums where there is no vocals, and I will enjoy it just as much. With emo music, 
there were no riffs. There, there were, there might have been a lead riff at the beginning of the song that kind of, you know, went into like this the main song or whatever. You know, there might be the da na da na 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 But then what did they go into after that? Eighth notes. Jin 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 jin. You know, so there was, it's boring. Every song, just like, and if there was a guitar lead going on somewhere, it was buried in the background, because again, lyrics being the important part here, not necessarily the music. There wasn't any really grooves with the songs. Um... And again, yes, there were kind of heavier parts where the drums and bass and guitar would be syncopated. Yes, that is technically a groove, but those were more like used for the breakdowns. In your everyday verse and chorus, there wouldn't really be a, a, a groove. It would just be uh, this, the drums just riding out the, I just want to break you down so badly. And it's like, it's just this, Okay, I mean, I guess if I was angry or if I was really like sad or if I felt like I could really relate to that lyric, maybe I'd be more into that. But I'm like, this is boring. All these bands are boring to me. Their music is doing nothing to me. There's no experimentation. There's no, like, there's nothing weird about an emo song. Like, there's not, like, they never, like, hit a weird note or try, like, a weird polyrhythm or anything like that. It's just all very much by the books, very 4-4, four, four, common time, um, no curveballs. And, you know, again, much like country, um, there comes a certain point to where if you experiment too much, you're no longer considered an emo band. They have these parameters. They have this box that you have to be in if you want to be in that genre, if you want to get invited to those to, to play on these festivals. You have to fit that box. And I, I've always had problems with that, with the, those kinds of mentalities. So, um, and then probably the third thing is, is just the sameness of it all. I could not tell you the difference between a Boys Like Girl song or a Silverstein song or a Census Fail or Bayside or The Starting Line or Parkway Drive. I could not tell you the difference between any of these bands. Uh, they just all sounded the same to me. They all had a similar sound, a similar feel, a similar everything, and I just... Uh, I can't, I can't vibe with that, man. Like I have to. So let's let's look at uh, let's look at the the best genre, the best time, the best decade to be around. The '90s. You had alternative rock, which was a big umbrella that a lot of bands fit under. You had a band like Primus and a band like Tool, sounding completely different than each other. Yet for some reason, you were totally okay if you heard a Tool song on your mix CD and then a Primus song came on. It just fit for some reason. You had the Smashing Pumpkins over here. You had Rage Against the Machine over here. You had all the uh, the Offspring over here. Uh, to a certain degree, you had Green Day because their first album was kind of considered alternative punk. Anyway, you had all these planets of these huge bands that had their completely unique sound that was all considered alternative rock. But you were getting something that, yeah, I, I get how these bands would fit together, you know, but they don't sound alike at all. That's the beauty of that genre. With this, with emo, the emo genre, not so much. Uh, all these bands are very much interchangeable, in my mind at least. Now, I did say exceptions. Uh, I do love me some AFI, but, you know, AFI put a lot more work into making... Um, Better written song, Sing the Sorrow, that album is a masterpiece in my opinion. And it's just, I don't know, they just really put their efforts into making a good sounding, I would call it an alternative rock record more than I would an emo album, although the lyrics are very emo-esque. Um, and then Jimmy Eat World is also on this bill. I, I do like Jimmy Eat World. I felt like they were emo light. I feel like Though they could definitely hang with the best of them with the sad lyrics. Um, I don't know. There's just something about their songwriting that I thought uh, was a that leaned a little bit more towards the alternative rock than it did to the emo. Um, the emos! I sound like a fucking old man. Somehow Poppy is playing this show. She is not from that time period, if, if I'm reading this logo right. P-O-P-P-Y. Uh, yeah, that's, I'm reading it right. Poppy was not uh, around during that time. She was probably the same age as us millennials. 
or maybe even younger. Um, so I don't know how she's on this bill. There's like a couple bands in here that um, weren't around back then that that made it onto this bill. So anyway, I've uh, stated that I don't like emo and I hate to break it to anybody who wanted me to like it. Um, I swear to God, I think there's this one kid at my gig who I just don't have the heart to break it to him that I don't like that kind of music because like anytime I play an emo song, he's like, yeah, dude, high five. Dude, isn't this great? And I just, I feel, I don't have it in me to be like, nah, I actually hate this music, but I'm only playing it because I think you'd like it. So I'm like, yeah, dude, this is great. You know, yeah, it's real great. Um, so this is like my second thing, my second question about this festival when we were young, which I mean, couldn't you at least get the killers on here if you're going to steal a lyric from one of their songs? When we were young, um, I, I, I did not sound like the killers just then. I sounded like, uh, a gay man from a play from the 1960s. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, oh fuck car seat headrest. What an awful band name. Sorry. I just saw that on the flyer. So, as the millennials got older, I can use the word we here because I consider myself a millennial, a millennial. As us millennials got older, we went from the, we threw away our skinny jeans and the eyeliner and we started going to like clubs and discos and all that more because indie pop became the next thing, right? MGMT, Foster the People. Um, I'm sure there's a bunch of bands that are that, that are skipping me right now because that that in and of itself was also a fad. Um, but yeah, uh, kids went from scene kids to hipsters, and they started listening to indie music and indie dance, and um, all these bands that were making this money from the teenagers, they started breaking up because either creative differences. Uh, they saw the money wasn't there anymore. They weren't able to do lucrative tours anymore. The sea change happened. The zeitgeist changed. And now they find themselves without a, an ability to make money because when your genre just kind of dies out and goes back into the underground, there's no more money to be made. Just like when 80s hair metal was killed single-handedly by grunge, a lot of those guys had to get day jobs. Same thing happened here. I'm looking at this bill. There is at least 30, 30 to 40 bands on here, it looks like. And this is all taking place in one day, mind you. One day. I thought at first this was broken up over uh, a couple of various days. No, this is all one day's time. My first question is, how did they, where did they get the money to convince all these old emo bands to reunite because I like I said at least half of these bands have been broken up for a while I mean I'm looking at them. Mayday Parade Census Fail Story of the Year Anne Berlin it's literally like every band that would have been on an on someone's iPod in 2007 or whatever Atrey you oh my god dude like this is bringing back my my nostalgia like, how did they unite all these bands? That must have been so much money. And then what's even crazier is, what are these bands, are they reuniting for this one show? Or are they back together? Are they, are they all just going to start releasing new music because they see how good Machine Gun Kelly's record did and how big Youngblood's becoming? I mean, that would be smart, but they're all old now. They're all in their, you know, 40s, maybe in their 50s. You know, I don't know if, the, if that'll still sell. It might uh, if kids... Well, I mean, we're getting older, too, as millennials. I mean, I'm 33, so I'm not exactly, uh, you know, a, a spring chicken, though I'm not old. I'm just kind of in the midpoint now. I think they call it middle-aged. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know where they got the money because they would have had to have paid significant money, ponied up significant money to get all these bands to reunite. So, yeah, this must have been a very expensive cost to these promoters. And, I mean... Not to mention, you got My Chemical Romance. I mean, come on. People have been foaming at the mouth to see this band reunite. And they, they, they have done a couple shows, but then COVID happened. And, oh, my God, this is, I mean, granted, this is going to be a huge turnout. So they're going to make a lot of money. But they, this was, whew, the investment. 
and being able to get all these bands to sign on and I was like I, I just I still don't believe it there's something fishy going on here these are the same people who put together the Travis Scott uh, Astro World festival recently where people um, stopped um, it, it living uh, to put it a nice way so do with that what you will um, so yeah and again the uh, one day thing uh, if there's like Okay, let's just say there's like 35 bands on this bill. If you have, well, let's say it's, uh, I don't know, what, what if it, let's say it starts at 11 a.m. and it goes until midnight. So you have like 13 hours. What, is each band only going to get 30 minutes to play? It's probably going to be something like that. Because you can't fit all these bands in, in one day. And give them, I mean, and there's like such like Dashboard Confessional, Avril Lavigne, like you're gonna, you're only gonna give them 30 minutes. That's all you can afford to give them if you want to have any, any like chance of um, getting all these bands on and playing in one day. I thought this was gonna be a three day affair, but no, nope, one day. Unless they do that shitty thing where there's like two different stages on the other sides of the of the arena and you have to walk like a half mile to get to the other stage and i guarantee you there's going to be so many that that's the only way they can they can literally feasibly do this they they're going to have to have two or three stages with bands playing all the time simultaneously for all these bands to uh be able to play and and get their time slots in and now you're going to have to be making choices constantly. Well, do I want to see the All-American Rejects or do I want to see Seosin? I don't know, you know. So, I don't know, man. We'll see what happens with this. I think it's sketchy. But I guess this video was kind of a two-parter. Why I don't like emo and um, why I think this festival is kind of screwy. Something fishy. I will be following this and I might do an update video on it. But this just seems... Seems too good to be true if you're an emo kid. So anyway, what do you think about emo? What do you think about this video? What do you think about me? What do you think about my house? What do you think about my face? What do you think about my dog that I don't own? Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, all that stuff. And I guess until next time, have a good rest of your night. And um, don't don't cut your wrists and black your eyes. It's not, not a good thing to do. All right, see you later.